you were a 90s kid, you knew who Nirvana was. And really, if you were a 2000s kid, and really even now, if you're a 20 teens kid, you know who Nirvana is. Nirvana is a very well-known group, even uh, all of these years after the death of Kurt Cobain. They were a huge group in the first part of the 1990s, ushering in the grunge sensation that actually was ushered in a little bit before that by bands such as Soundgarden and Mother Love Bone, but they were the ones that pasted the mainstream success and brought the rest of the boys reluctantly onward, along with other groups such as Pearl Jam with 10, either that or Soundgarden with Super Unknown, Bad Motor Finger, and even Stone Temple Pilots. However, it was a traditional rock and roll style career for this band. You know, enigmatic lead singer really doesn't want fame all that much, enigmatic singer shoots himself in the face. Or was he murdered? We'll talk about that later. So Nirvana, of course, has scores of fans, it still has scores of fans. You can still walk around any popular establishment from Walmart to your local mall and still find a Nirvana shirt from time to time. It's not quite as frequent as it was uh, in the 2000s, but hey, based off of that, there's also a lot of folks that hate this band and they've never liked them or really don't like them for very silly reasons. That's why we're here. We're here to talk about those silly reasons. Here's five reasons why some people hate Nirvana. And we're going to start with number five. Number five is that they believe that grunge killed metal. And that means that grunge is not worth listening to, even though grunge has been dead for 20 years. Yes, it is true that it is very strange to see that thrash metal and especially Glam metal was doing extremely well during the latter portions of the 1980s and to, into the early portions of the 1990s, and then all of a sudden, grunge comes along and it's almost like the kid's new favorite plaything, and it becomes the new hot ticket, and because of that, heavy metal had a very bad, bad time in the 1990s, supposedly. This is ridiculous, and it really has been something that we have disproven in videos in the past, and Based off of that, we will just sort of, you know, Cliff's notes this a little bit. Uh, metal wasn't killed by grunge. Metal was already sort of on a downward spiral whenever it came to commercial adaptability. The thrash metal bands that were doing well were starting to release more commercial albums, which fans weren't exactly liking as much, and the glam metal bands were actually releasing some of their worst material, and most of them were starting to break up. So, based around all of that, we were seeing that metal wasn't exactly being killed by grunge. Metal was killing itself. In the 1990s, we're all that bad of a decade anyway, considering we had a lot of bands that were on the underground that were starting to do exactly what was necessary to get themselves on top. And whenever we look internationally, heavy metal was doing great, and it was actually divisioning itself even further to set up further success. If you hate Nirvana because you think that grunge killed metal, nah, you're just an idiot. Number four, Courtney Love. Did she shoot him? Or did she, he shoot himself? Did she goad him into it? Courtney Love became an iconic figure almost overnight. I mean, she was part of Hole, and, you know, uh, assumingly still is. Whether or not the band is active still or not, I honestly could care less. I never really liked them anyway. But it seemed like Courtney Love all of a sudden became a celebrity because of Kurt Cobain's death. We started to see her on roasts, we started to see her in the media, and the whole was starting to get a little bit of a pop resurgence because of a couple of the peanut singles. And the whole thing just smelled a lot of fishy to a lot of people. And this is one of those figures that also felt like they were perhaps steering Kurt in a bad way or in a bad direction, considering she was just as drug addled as he was. We really don't know what happened behind closed doors. This is, again, Part of a debate that really, whenever it comes to music fans, might as well be their JFK assassination. This is the one where they hope that the government will secretly release the files and all of a sudden, all the questions will be answered and we will understand just why the world works and why toast is better whenever we put butter on it as opposed to, you know, just by itself. Unless you're me, I guess. But Courtney Love became this figure that became such a painful or scornful part of Nirvana that it was a reason for them to hate the band. I found that to be kind of odd whenever I discovered that, but the reasoning was very simple. They had so much distaste for Courtney Love, they did not like Nirvana considering they learned the association between Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love. Is that confusing enough for you? It was confusing enough for me whenever I discovered it, and yeah, absolutely retarded. Number three, Kurt Cobain's drug use and stardom. This is one that, during the 1990s, made them a band that, while all the kids were starting to gravitate toward them, made a lot of parents hesitant to allow all of their kids to gravitate toward them. They started to hear about the drug use. They started to hear about his feelings towards stardom. And, of course, it's led to many controversial opinions. He didn't want to be a star. Why did he start playing music? 
Maybe because he just wanted to play music and he was offered a contract, said, fuck it, why not? We're just going to sell, you know, 10,000 records because we're just going to play whatever we want. And all of a sudden, you know, the planets align and Kurt Cobain is a megastar that's selling out arenas and is selling 10 million copies of Nevermind. It's ridiculous, but it is still something that happened. Remember, the 1990s it was not that far removed from the PMRC hearings of the 1980s, so there was still a lot of concern uh, among parents and among, you know, world figures, like actual figures, you know, within the United States about content and this and that and worrisome stuff about uh, whether or not this was going to affect the children in a negative way, whether it was going to make them turn into drug addicts or make them turn into grunge folk that, you know, just start wearing, you know, ripped jeans and flannel and look like they are some sort of rejected little tiny lumberjacks. It, it happened, but they were still concerned about it, okay? It didn't make sense. But this is something that did occur and it caused a lot of folks to feel that Nevermind, or not Nevermind, but Nirvana was a group that was not for their children or at least something that should not be played for them considering all of that angst was going to cause something and we just didn't know what it was. Honestly, I think we have more to worry about or had more to worry about with new Metal than we probably did with Nirvana. Number two, the music itself. This seems like the most basic of ideas. It kind of ties in a little bit to the number five and the thing that grunge killed metal. They simply don't like Nirvana because it's grunge music, and grunge music to them is sort of a, a subspecies of rock that it has just, it's something that's not for them. They don't like Alice in Chains. They don't like uh, Nirvana. They don't really care for Soundgarden or any of the grunge groups, considering it either killed their favorite genre of music or is just not something that their ears enjoy. They say it's simplified. They say it's this. They say it's that. They say it's stoned out. It's drugged out. It's whatever. Whatever the reason might be, it's the music itself that sometimes gets the blame here. They feel, uh, for uh, aside from these folks, there are still others that feel that Nirvana was the simplest out of all the groups, and based around that, that's the reason why they disliked the band. They enjoyed some of the more complex tones that you got from a Soundgarden or an Alice in Tra uh, Chains track, which sometimes gravitated a little bit more uh, toward the heaviness of metal, either that or had a little bit more of a rock or even sometimes a blues disclosure behind it in order to give it a little bit more ass. They didn't feel like Nirvana had nearly enough going for them musically to really constitute their listen. And considering they became a popular entity, they became sort of the poster boy of grunge, it caused them just to hate the band as opposed to just be dismissive of them. And finally, number one, their merchandise became a trend and Nirvana became a band that was very cool to hate. Have you ever encountered somebody that has been wearing a shirt of a band such as the Misfits or Nirvana is another great example and you walk up to them and say, hey, I love that band too. Uh, what are some of your favorite songs? And then they can't name any of them or can only name Smells Like Teen Spirit. This is the vein that has caused a lot of sleepless nights for many music fans, many Nirvana fans, uh, for quite some time, especially during the 2000s going into the 20-teens. Whenever it seemed like Nirvana wasn't just a group that was all about you know, the music and the songs and everything, but instead it was just the figurehead of Kurt Cobain. They wanted to perhaps read his poetry or wanted to have one of his posters or have him on a t-shirt and that was simply all. They didn't want to actually explore the music and become a true Nirvana fan. Instead they just wanted to have the stigma that goes along with it or the you know the, the association that goes along with it and this was something that became a really big problem for a lot of people. This is one where it's felt like that these little trend hoppers were actually the haters of the merchandise or the haters of the band itself because there was absolutely no reason uh, for them to explore it in their minds. And based off of that, Nirvana became a fad. Yes, unbelievably speaking, Nirvana and their t-shirts and merchandise became a fad long after their music and their careers had died right alongside of Kurt Cobain. Now, why this has been great fiscal revenue for Courtney Love or whoever else has a stake in it, this is also a really, really big problem to a lot of people. Their association and their love for the band actually started to wane because of it. But there was also a second factor that was implemented here as well. Nirvana became a group that, especially with the advent of the internet and the advent of chat rooms and comment sections and things, became very cool to hate. 
they became one of those groups that was very, very cool to sort of give them the shaft or give them the apt end to instead be more of a meme uh, group that had, of course, the unfortunate end of a gunshot. And, you know, Kurt Cobain's suicide started to get jokes that were associated with it, and there was just a lot of hatred that seemed to be spewed toward this group, just based around how the internet itself seems to work and get its kicks. Yes, we eat Tide Pods and make fun of people for shooting themselves in the face because they're celebrities. Because we're smart in 2018. But that was something. It was something you can't deny for those of you who are starting to get up there in age, that this was something that if you were a fan, not only of Nirvana, but maybe just of alternative slash rock slash even metal music over the course of the past 10 years, that was very often seen. And based around that, hatred became more than just based off of those that were implementing these ideas, but also those who were implementing the ideas as well to cause a clusterfuck of strange hate that was kind of not founded very well. The trend thing didn't help either. You gave a Nirvana shirt, maybe five songs that aren't Smells Like Teen Spirit or Lithium. I really don't need anything on it, never mind. Does that sound elitist? I probably did, and it's probably something that also fostered some of the hate, but at this point, who really cares? That's it. Five reasons why people hate Nirvana. There's probably tons of others. In fact, if there's one that you thought that you missed, then uh, let me know in the comments below. Get anything Nirvana related if you want to over at the Amazon page if you so desire. If you think there's another band that deserves a Five Reasons video where they're roasted, toasted, and burnt to a crisp. In reality, it's actually their fan base probably that is. Let me know in the comments below as well. I'm Cover Killer Nation. I'll talk to you next time.